and welcome to our webinar on 3D printing technology and how it affects aerospace and defense industry. My name is Andy Deal. I'm your host. Um, and today I have the pleasure of having our customer and partner Stretch Forming Corporation on the webinar, as well as our OEM partner, Mark Forge, uh, who produces some of the, the, the best 3D printing technology in the industry. So if you look at the 3D printing industry, the projection is within the next five years, the investment in this technology is gonna double. At, at a minimum, it, it's gonna double. And this is just one projection from Mordor Intelligence. But if you look at other projections, they are about the same. So what, that, what does that mean to you? What that means is, Companies in A and D are investing in the technology. Um, if you have not looked at 3D printing or additive manufacturing and how it can impact your organization, it's now time to seriously take a look at it. And today, hopefully, we'll be able to, to share with you uh, some of the technology and information that you can take back and, and kind of evaluate and see how you can leverage this um, in what you are doing. This is nothing new. Uh, if you in aerospace and defense, you know about um, these challenges, right? There's always supply chain and labor sh uh, shortage issues. Um, obviously, you have to always deal with safety and performance. And there, there is not an industry that's more regulated um, than aerospace, right? So these are challenges and pressures that companies in this industry have to deal with all the time. So how do you alleviate some of these pressure? Well, add additive manufacturing or 3D printing uh, could be one of the area where you can look to, to do that, right? Um, it helps you speed up production, cut leads time, it uh, reduces costs, increases efficiency, uh, and you can do amazing things uh, that you can in 3D printing that you couldn't with traditional manufacturing, right? Um, you can create toolings and, and speed up production in many different ways. And hopefully today in this webinar, uh, we'll be able to show you some of the, um, the ways to do that. So the flow of the webinar today, uh, we're gonna have Stretch Forming Corporation talk about uh, what they have done uh, Stretch Forming Corporation is an aerospace manufacturing company. They'll share <clears throat> some of the insights and, and things that they've done with to incorporate 3D printing into their process. Um, and then Andrew Mosbon uh, from Saratech. Andrew is our technical manager for 3D printing. He works very closely with the folks at Stretch Forming and, and other customers to kind of implement 3D printing technology, and he'll share some of the, the tips and tricks and, and what we've done in our engagement process with you. Um, and then I'd like to introduce, after that, Melissa uh, from Mark Forge, who's, who will talk about their technology and the different applications that companies are doing in aerospace. Um, and then we, we'll talk quickly about next steps, um, what you should be doing, and then we also have a uh, time at the end to answer any questions that you may have. So with that, uh, I'd like to introduce Mike Russell and Brian Gary. Um, Mike is the GM at SFC and Brian is a owner and president and you know SFC is an award-winning uh, aerospace manufacturing company uh, located in Paris, California. So with that, uh, Mike, Brian, all yours. Thank you, Andy. All right. Thanks, Andy. So just as a brief agenda, just to kind of go over what we're going to be discussing today, we'll have a brief introduction of, you know, who SFC is and what we do, an overview of our capabilities. We'll go ahead and tell you how we got introduced and started working with Saratech. And then lastly, we'll go through how we've applied additive manufacturing here at SFC. Okay. So who is SFC? Well, SFC is a build to print contract manufacturer located here in Paris, California. Um, our core competencies, which we'll kind of get in further detail in the next couple slides, are heat treating, metal forming, and machining. And that is primarily in the aerospace, defense, and space industries. 
uh, a brief overview of our customers. So you'll see much working with everybody there. And to get a little bit more into our capabilities. So first of all, machining. Um, we have an extensive equipment list. Um, we do all of our NC programming in-house with the latest CAM software. Uh, we have capabilities in five-axis machining envelope up to 370 inches by 130 inches. So that's a very large envelope for five-axis machining. And three-axis machining envelopes up to 200 by 90 inches. Um, and then obviously we offer high levels of accuracy, quality, and reliability in our machining process. As far as metal forming is concerned, um, we have an extensive equipment list. Uh, we manufacture a variety of parts, uh, fuselage skins, uh, like our longitudinal skin uh, stretch forming, up to 28 feet in length and 72 inches in width. And parts like leading edges on our transverse skin stretch forming, up to 144 inches length. Um, and then longitudinal profile swing arm stretch pressing up to 40 feet in length. Next slide, please. No review of our heat treating capabilities. This is really important uh, to SFC because it's an integral part of the process in the metal forming process. So we can salute the heat treat up to 10 foot by 10 foot by 20 foot. And then artificial aids, the same envelope. We have an extensive customer approval listing along with NADCAP approval for heat treat as well. Okay, so what I like to call the SFC Saratech story. So how do we get introduced to Saratech and how do we get working with them? Um, so early this year in June of 2023, Brian and I were at the Paris Air Show. And um, if you haven't had a chance to, to attend the Paris Air Show, I highly recommend you do. Um, a lot of the meetings you have at the Paris Air Show are already pre-set up. But kind of what Brian and I found were that, that the best meetings we had were people that just happened to come by our booth. And so one day we were sitting at our booth and Ken Sherwinski, the VP of engineering for Saratech, happened to come by our booth. And Brian and Ken kind of knew each other from a previous life. And so we kind of got to talk and just say, hey, you know, what have you been up to? What are you doing these days? And Ken says, hey, I'm working for this great company, Saratech, in Orange County, Carolina, California. We're doing a lot of neat things. One of the neatest things we've been doing lately is 3D printing. And we're starting to 3D print metal forming tools. And so the little uh, black 3D printed part on the screen there. He pulls up a picture of that and says, hey, you know, we 3D printed this hydroform block. It was really successful. We've been thinking about how we get into the stretch forming side of the business and do some prototype tooling, see how it works out. If I could jump in, Mike, you know, because we had played with 3D printing a, you know, a few years earlier and we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, we tried to do it on our own. Uh, and, but him coming by and, and showing us that, and then you'll go into what happened next, which was was incredibly the timely. Uh, we ended up well. I'll let you continue, Mike. But it was uh, we couldn't figure it out on our own. We tried it on our own, and that wasn't a success. That was that was a few years ago. Correct. But more recently, this has been a home run, and I don't know how else to word it. But I'll let you continue, Mike. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. That's okay. That's 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 that was good input. Um, yeah, so essentially he said you wanted to work with us on, on doing some prototype stretch forming tooling and see how the tools hold up to the forces of stretch forming. And kind of at that point in June, we didn't really have any plans to work together other than just the thought, and we kind of walked away from that uh, show with that with that thought. Next slide, please. Um, so then we get into how we utilized it and, and really come to the challenge. So. On the Boeing D-52, uh, we received a large award in July of 2023 for the test units on a re-engine re package for the B-52. Uh, the award was to extend the life of the existing B-52 fleet. Um, the total part award we had at that time was 92 unique part numbers. And it had a very aggressive uh, delivery for the program being January 1st, 2024. So, we kind of got thinking about it and I said, you know, hey, a lot of these parts fit in that envelope with the 3D printer can do. So this is how we kind of got to on to it. Next slide, please. And ultimately how we utilized the 3D, the, uh, 3D uh, printing was to reduce the lead time on all of our stretch form tooling. 
So as soon as we got that award, I got to thinking about it and said, hey, let's get a design over to Saratag on a 3D, you know, on a, on a stretch form block that they can 3D print. And then we can take that and see what the lead time to manufacture that tool is, run a test part on it, validate it through the FAI process and confirm we have a good part. But the result of that, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, but it had, as I recall, Saeed and Ken came up and we had a, a great meeting. And then uh, I think after that, uh, Andrew and the Sarah Tech team came up and walked through and open our eyes to not only the form tools, but many uh, many of the, the holding fixtures and other other um, aspects of, uh, of tooling and machining uh, in the machine shop area, and at not only the forming area, that, uh, you know, Andrew, at half hour there, we learned more about 3D printing than the past three, four years. Uh, so I, I thought that, that was massive. Then I'll let you continue, Mike, I apologize. No, that's that's good. No, you're absolutely right. I think that there was a, a, a lot of other things we were turned on to in the shop, and we weren't even thinking of 3D printing. You know, we kind of attacked it from this whole let's make stretch form tooling and 3D print stretch form tooling. Obviously, the result of that was 10x reduction in lead time on the tooling, which is huge. Um, I don't think we would ever hit that that uh, lead time, uh, the, the contractual delivery date without 3D printing the tooling. You know, our typical lead time to design, produce, procure material, machine tooling is about 12 weeks. We took that down to one week. Uh, and then, you know, the success there and then Andrew's visit kind of turned us on to so many more things where we're applying this now on all of our mill fixture work holding and additional any type of uh, clamping fixturing, um, you know, check template tooling. And the additional benefit we, we kind of received from all this as well was opening capacity in our NC machine centers. It's, they would typically be machine tooling. Now we can run parts that we need to run for customers. And this is just our contact information. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Thank you, Mike and Brian, for, for sharing your story. Um, obviously, that's going from 12 weeks to one. That's that's phenomenal. And and this is this is a, a real story, folks. This is not some some stats that that we just throw up there this is this is an actual practical application um, with that i'd like to introduce andrew mossbond he's the technical manager uh, for the 3d printing organization uh, at saratech and andrew will share you a little a little bit more insight of of the work that we did uh, with sfc and also share with you some of the capabilities that that we have and, and what we can do uh, to help your team as well andrew Awesome. Thank you, Andy. I got to say, Brian, Mike, it's been really great working with you guys so far. And your success with additive manufacturing really shows the potential that these technologies have to make such a dramatic impact on, on your business. Um, and, you know, the model that we use uh, with you guys to arrive at your solution is something that we try and replicate with all of our customers. And I'll walk you through those steps here. So the first uh, step is a discovery call or an on-site visit. Um, and this is one of the most important things. It, it helps us get to know you, get to know your business, and learn what it is you're trying to achieve. And a lot of times there can be a mismatch between what customers are expecting to get out of additive manufacturing versus what is realistic or what makes the most sense. And by being on site with you and seeing your process and your shop and how, how your business runs, it really gives us a sense of where opportunities are. So from there, we go into an engineering exploration where we look at your current processes. We get a good understanding of what your requirements are. Maybe it's a thermal requirement, loading requirement, chemical resistance, whatever it is. We look at it and we see uh, what a good you know, possible solution to that would be. Um, from there, we look at it from a business standpoint. You know, what, what are what is the additive solution provide compared to your traditional solution in terms of cost savings, uh, lead time reduction, labor, warehousing, all of that, and we see if this is something that actually makes sense. From there, of course, we implement that solution. We measure the results, see if we're successful, and if we're successful, we want to re repeat that over and over again. And you know, ultimately, we want you to bring the technology in house, adopt it, and and like you said. Uh, Brian, you know, control your own destiny there. So um, this process has, you know, it, it's been a process we've been using with customers. It's really successful as, as SFC has proven here. Um, you can go to the next slide, Andy. Now, 
Ceratech at its core is a product development company, and we serve a wide range of industries, even beyond aerospace and defense. And we help companies make better products, and we have a comprehensive range of solutions to do that. So we have a full staff of talented engineers that provide engineering, design, and analysis services. And we also implement and sell Siemens CAD and data management solutions. And also, we offer support for fabrication using both traditional methods as well as additive manufacturing. Now, you can go to the next slide. Additive manufacturing is where I come in. Our additive department has many solutions to help you improve your product development. Um, we work with different machine OEMs, Mark Forge, HP, Big Rep. Uh, in the case of Stretch Forming Corp, uh, they've been lucky enough to use all of our technologies. We did some parts for them out of Mark Forge material, out of HP 3D printed parts. Some parts were done on a Big Rep as well. Um, so we partner with some of the top 3D printing companies to help you bring this technology in house. And not only can we provide you with the hardware, but also software and training so that you get the most out of your investment. And with our engineering services, we can help you with prototyping and design for additive manufacturing or DFAM. And then of course, if you're not ready to bring that technology home yet, we can print parts for you as a service. And that's how we got our start with SFC. Um, so in a moment, I'll pass it over to Melissa Levy at Mark Forge. Mark Forge is one of our OEM partners that provides an incredible 3D printing platform. Their ecosystem of accurate and reliable hardware is coupled with a very easy to use software, and it goes along with some engineering grade, very extensively tested materials that have proven successful across a wide range of industries. But Mark Forge has also honed in and catered specifically to aerospace and defense with unique solutions to meet the strict demands and challenges of those industries. And so now I'll pass it over to Melissa to talk more about that technology. Perfect, thanks Andrew. Um, nice to meet everyone, my name is Melissa Levy. I manage the aerospace and defense go-to-market team here at Mark Forge. Um, I have the pleasure of working with Sarah Taka as one of our partners. Um, so today I'm going to speak just a little bit about who Mark Forged is. Andrew did a great introduction of our technology on the whole. Um, I'll spend just a little bit more talking about our solution. Um, but then I'm going to spend a little bit more time talking about some of the things that we've done in the aerospace and defense industry, um, and then talk about some examples of how our customers have used our technology, uh, especially, uh, as it relates to our aerospace and defense customers. Um, so Mark Forge was founded, sorry, we'll go back. Oh, Mark sorry. Forge was founded in 2013, um, headquartered in Boston. Uh, all of our printers, materials, and our software all designed and manufactured in the US. Um, we have technology, you can see uh, both FFF, so, uh, Fused filament fabrication, composite, and metal printing technologies, which are great for um, some lower volume production, lower volume manufacturing or additive manufacturing. Um, and then we also have some metal binder jetting technologies, which is a great, great and used for higher volume production um, for very small, complex, or detailed parts. So a lot of the solutions I'm going to talk to you today are around our FFF technologies, um, just because and often um, some of the lower volume is really a good fit for aerospace and defense. Um, however, if you do have a need for production parts, more specifically is where you're going to see a good fit for A&D. Um, high volume, like I said, high volume, uh, very small, complex, detailed parts. So think... Uh, parts less than four inches by four inches or tens to hundreds of thousands of parts per year, that's where that metal binder jetting technology might be a better fit. But um, like I said, a lot of my ap applications will be around the composite metal FFF technology. Um, Andrew talked about this, but um, Mark Forge solution, we call it the digital floor forge. It is a platform consisting of our hardware, so our industrial 3D printers, our industrial materials. So these are the materials that are printed from our uh, systems. And then our software that 
ensures that those materials are going to print seamlessly on those systems. So our engineers have taken uh, the time to make sure that everything is tuned properly so that you're going to have really great luck and very repeatable parts out of our solution without our customers having to be experts on additive manufacturing. We want our customers to be solving their production or manufacturing or automation needs without um, an expert uh, person dedicated to additive manufacturing. So we may, we try to make additive manufacturing very accessible uh, to our customers. Um, as mentioned, I'm not gonna talk a ton about our technology today, um, but I do wanna just briefly talk about some of our um, applications that are unlocked with our FFF style printers. So on the composite side, Mark Forge is known for our continuous fiber technology. So what that means is our uh, composite systems are able to not only lay down a plastic material or like that base composite material, um, the printer is also able to take strands of carbon fiber or strands of Kevlar or strands of fiberglass and basically lay those down into your composite printed part. This opens up applications where higher strength might be required. So uh, we have customers that have printed parts with the continuous fiber uh, that the strength of those parts has exceeded aluminum 6061. So really opening up aluminum strength with lighter weight, non-marring parts, uh, plastic parts. Um, on the composite side, We've got flame retardant variant of our, our base onyx material, which is like our flagship. Um, we have electrostatic dissipative version of our material. Um, and then we also have some other materials, a PLA for low cost modeling and prototyping, a TPU for think like uh, gaskets or something that's more rubber like. Um, and then we have some high temperature thermoplastics for more demanding end use parts. Uh, on the metal side, uh, our metal system called the Metal X opens up the when you know the composites not composites don't meet your needs and you really need the strength of steel. Our Metal X opens up opportunities with easy and allows you to easily change between different metal materials of what you're printing. So you can easily go from printing 17-4 stainless to an ink and L625, three different tool steels, or a pure copper. So um, our applications across um, not just aerospace and defense, but we have customers across all types of manufacturing, automation, and production. Um, so most of, I think the largest, like largest 10 manufacturers, educational institutions, um, all use MarkForge technology in some way. So, um, as it relates to yep, as it relates to aerospace and defense, uh, I'm going to talk about just like a little bit about some of the things that we've done in partnership for the our, our industry customers. Um, so the first thing, as it relates to aerospace production of end use parts in particular, we have a current qualification going on with the National Institute of Aviation Research. So we've taken one of our printers um, and we are creating a statistical data report uh, of our material, our flame retardant materials out of that printer. I will talk a little bit more about it uh, later on in this presentation as well. So that will open up easier applications for end use additively manufactured parts. Um, across some of our defense customers, uh, we have a Mark Forge printer at every one of the uh, naval shipyards. We also have cooperative research and development agreements in place with both Nav Air and Nav C. Um, with Nav Air, we are working with them on aircraft maintenance and re maintenance repair and operations. So think uh, tooling, tooling and fixtures, ground support equipment, and even production flyaway parts. For Nav C, I'll talk a little bit more about our afloat project with them. Um, 
And then for as it relates to our intelligence community community customers, uh, Mark Forge was part of an organization called Incutel. We worked with them hand in hand to help develop our 3D printed copper that I showed on the prior slide, um, enabled that to get into the hands of our intelligence community and special operations forces customers um, at, a, at a faster pace. Um, and lastly, I'll talk a little bit more about what we're doing with our U.S. Marine Corps customers on a, another slide. Okay, so uh, our U.S. Marine Corps customers, uh, we are part of uh, the first ever U.S. Department of Defense programs of record for additive manufacturing. So the U.S. Marine Corps is basically trying to uh, get additive manufacturing equipment into uh, the hands of their uh, in the hands of the military in austere environments so that they can solve problems for maintenance and repair, um, solve their mission, mission readiness goals, um, and complete what they need to do in the field. So um, the first is our the XFAB program, which basically takes large containers um, and puts additive manufacturing equipment in them uh, and allows those to be forward deployed. So that's like a, a larger solution. The U.S. Marine Corps TACFAB program, um, instead of a large container filled with additive manufacturing equipment, the equipment is put in Pelican cases, so it allows it to be more easily transported and moved around more quickly. Um, so because of this this, because Mark Forge printers are so reliable, robust, and the parts that are printed are repeatable, that is uh, why the Marine Corps has chosen Mark Forge to be part of both of those programs. And then with our Navy customers, we have a float printing. Uh, in the article in the top right, you can see that one of our printers was put on the USS New Hampshire to uh, employ uh, the the crews of the USS New Hampshire to um, solve problems, for example, pipe leaks, um, new enclosures for electronics, as mentioned, um, help solve problems at the point of need. We have also our float program we've been working with the NAVC also covers uh, surface vessel printing as well. Um, so again, speaking to the reliability, robustness of the printers themselves and the products that they can make. Um, yeah, one application for our Spanish Air Force customer. They are a helicopter workshop of the Madrid Air Force and are repairing Eurocopter helicopters. They are using the Mark Forge technology for replacement parts for their helicopters, aluminum strength tools, and measuring fixtures, helping to solve MRO uh, requirements with shorter lead times and lower cost. So some of the examples of the tools and fixtures you can see on the right here, um, from hand tools to inline production uh, support equipment to a rescue crane that was printed with continuous fiber and utilized uh, on the aircraft. I'm going to talk a little bit about some applications, like non-specific applications, but some applications that might be a good fit for some of our some customers that might be looking into additive manufacturing um, and some examples of where you might be able to kind of get started utilizing AM technologies. So uh, the first and easiest way to get into using additive manufacturing is prototyping. Prototyping doesn't need to be just a one-off um, part. It can be used for um, checking sizes, dimensions, it can also be utilized to be functional prototyping until your hardware comes back. So in this example here, uh, the machine metal fairing typically was a four month lead time and the customer needed to continue their assembly operations without that part. So they were able to use the printer, 
uh, print up the print up the temporary fairing and active as a placeholder uh, so that they can continue their manufacturing and assembly operations around it. So uh, one use of prototyping. Uh, this next one was our uh, tool and fixtures. Tools and fixtures is a great use for the Mark Forge technology. So this is a rotor check gauge. Uh, being able to print these check gauges in-house can alleviate fabrication costs and lead times, especially if you are sending those out or uh, if you're machining them and you've got allocation to other projects. So this tool in particular was able to check three different dimensions. You can, after printing the part, the customer was actually able to use uh, our inspection software that I'll talk a little bit about, a little bit more about, um, to verify that the parts were good right off the print bed, but post-process inspection would also help ensure this as well. So this is an example in the pictures here. You can see a contour drill template and bushing. So anytime you have complex geometries, additive manufacturing can be a really great fit. So especially complex geometries can be very costly, hard to manufacture, long lead times. Being able to additively manufacture the part, uh, print in place, get parts you know, in, within the matter of hours or days as opposed to weeks or months. Being able to add continuous fiber, as I mentioned, that make parts very strong and stiff, it ensures that you know, the production part tooling is going to be very strong and withstand uh, daily use from the, the user on the floor. Okay. Soft jaws. So this is something that we see very frequently. Um, the soft jaws here used in a milling operation, but uh, our customers are using these frequently across um, any machining operation. By using the continuous carbon fiber here too, you're like, able to ensure that the part is rigid, strong, and again, going to be durable to hold for um, the duration of the operation and then over and over again. Um, additive manufacturing, uh, often, you know, something with this complex holding the non-marring surface, um, tolerant to industrial cooling, coolant makes this a really good, easy solution. Um, cost and lead time savings very frequently over traditional manufacturing methods, too. Um, then the part here, this is a aircraft bracket forming tool that's used with uh, the continuous fiberglass as well for added shape um, and, sorry, added strength and low cost. So this is used in a 100 ton hydraulic press to form uh, edge support bracket for the C5 Galaxy. So um, a lot of times in our manufacturing customers, their biggest costs end up being tools and fixtures. And often they're used in low volume quantities in production or maintenance and repair. So uh, saving costs and saving lead time, as I'm sure all you know, is um, the huge largest driver of why we see customers ad adopting additive manufacturing. So added strength here from that continuous fiberglass ensures that part's going to hold its strength um, while you have this continued uh, forming process. And then lastly, um, this is going to be the hardest, or I guess the not easiest to first start with additive manufacturing. Um, but some of these are examples uh, the pictures here are examples of how our customers are using our composite additively manufactured parts in production aircraft environments. So um, custom parts that need to uh, look very nice, they need to be lightweight, aesthetic, um, low cost, and low volume. This is a great fit for. So uh, these, the parts on the top right have gone through a finishing process, but were printed on a composite printer. 
Um, you see some brackets here uh, and some hardware that's utilized. And then uh, the parts on the bottom, everything that you see in that picture has been made using uh, additive manufacturing as well. And then in the bottom left, that cup holder, uh, as you can see, all these parts look very clean. You don't see the layer lines that you associate with low, low cost uh, composite printing. Um, you're going to get best in class surface finish out of the Mark Forge printers with easy finishing and cleanup for final production hardware. So we have a couple materials that enable production in an aerospace environment. We have two high temperature thermal plastics, uh, Ultim 9085 and a material, uh, PEC material that we just released to the market last week that help enable production worthy aer aerospace parts. Um, we also have a flame retardant version of our flagship onyx material and carbon fiber that are built for aerospace applications as well. So these materials meet the requirements of CFR 25.853 for car compartment interiors. Um, we provide traceability for all the doc for all the materials as well to ensure that it's going to meet your aerospace requirements. And obviously parts are very strong and lightweight with the added continuous carbon fiber. For these materials in particular, we have been working on an end camp qualification that I mentioned through the National Institute of Aviation Research. What that means is we've put together material and process specifications for our one of our printers, the X7 that's shown below, with our flame retardant onyx material and our flame retardant carbon fiber. We then went and printed and tested over 3,000 samples of that material on those printers to put together and publish a statistical material data report. So this is something that's available to the public. It is going to be published in the next month and a half, should be published before the end of the calendar year. Um, if you look up NCAMP, um, you will soon be able to find the statistical data report on the material, which will help enable easier access to production worthy additively manufactured parts. If you have more questions on this, we'd love to chat more as well. One other tool that has enabled some of our aerospace customers to move faster in their aerospace production environments is our in-process laser micrometer that's built into our X7 printer. So this basically enables point of fabrication inspection during your additive manufacturing print process. So this in-process inspection software, the way it works is that laser micrometer that's built into the print head will scan the part uh, after it prints a layer or a couple of layers. You can define the, the how fine you want the scanning to be, um, but it'll go back and measure that part as it's being printed. It will then generate a point cloud that represents the, the part that has been printed in place. Um, that can be utilized to be compared to your input model, your STL or your print model, and you can compare how far is my printed part versus uh, our, my input geometry. You can look at different geometries within the part. You can see here it's measuring from the, the center point of these two holes. What is that distance there? You can plug in and say, every time I print this part, I want a quality report to be generated that lists the, your critical dimensions um, and allows you to ensure that your print part's going to meet requirements once it's completed. So an example, one of our aerospace customers that's put printing flight-worthy parts was able to verify using manual inspection and the X7 micrometer to verify that that process was repeatable and we were able they were able to have uh, the FAA buy off that process as an inspection process for their printed parts, which was able to save an average of 30 minutes of active time per part. 
And then lastly, um, security profile. Security is very important for MarkForge and is very important in the aerospace and defense industry, of course. Um, so we have both online cloud-based software and offline software to meet any uh, security requirements for, for our customers. Um, software can be installed within an ITAR environment. And our company has an ISO 27001 certification around information management security, which really says that uh, security is in the forefront of everything we do from our manufacturing operations to our people processes um, to our production um, or design processes. So security, yes, is in, in the forefront of everything we do. With that, um, I will hand it off. Great, thank you very much, Melissa. Uh, fantastic presentation. I love a lot of the the applications and, and, and things that you pointed out and the materials and um, exciting things that Mark Forge is doing. So what's next? Hopefully we were able to kind of open your uh, eyes and ears to ideas of applications and things that you could do within um, your organization when it comes to 3D printing. And trust me, this is just barely touching the surface. There are so many more applications and things that you can do um, that we just didn't have time to cover today. So what should you be doing? What, what, would, what should you do next? Well, just take a look at where you are in this journey. Are you already using 3D printing in-house? If you are, um, Take a look at where else can you apply this technology? Where can you save time and, and um, improve your, your throughput? Um, as Brian and, and um, Mike mentioned earlier, you know, just taking a, a walk through your shop floor, a lot of time uh, we can help you point out areas where you can absolutely implement 3D printing and, and save, your tell, save yourself a lot of time and, uh, and effort. Um, if you're currently outsourcing, um, is it time to take this technology in-house? Are you at a point where you need to make that transition? When is the right time? Again, we can help you evaluate and look at that. And the, the third scenario is you're not even using 3D printing today. And if you're not, do not get left behind. As, as you saw in my earlier chart, um, the investment in this technology is going to more than double in five years. So um, everyone is doing it. Your competition is doing it, using and leveraging this technology. So if you have not looked into it, you need to seriously take a look. And again, we can help. Uh, as mentioned earlier by Andrew, Seratech is an engineering company. We focus on helping customers with product development. And we work not with just aerospace, but um, organization across many industries. Uh, we have a lot of technical people on staff. Matter of fact, over 50% of our employees are degreed engineers and work constantly with customers on different projects. And, and we do, uh, you know, real world project. We don't just sell the technology. So with that, um, I'm going to open up this session to questions and answers. So we have some questions that already came in. Uh, if you have a question that you wanna ask, please type it in your chat box and uh, we'll get our team here um, to address and answer those questions. So panelists, if you don't mind turning back your, um, turn your camera back on, I'm gonna ask some of these questions that have come in. All right, so one of the questions that I have that came in from Jose is, as a vendor for various industry products in the digital data requirements, what are the sizes of tooling that can be created using 3D printing? So who wants to take a look, uh, tackle that one? I can take a stab at that. So um, at Ceratech, we have a, a solution for many different sizes. So we, we can do, you know, small prints, um, parts, you know, a couple inches in size. We have technology that goes all the way up to uh, about a meter by half meter by a half meter tall. So very large uh, format printing as well. Um, 
obviously with any technology, you know, the, lar the larger you get, the more you have to look into tolerances, what your requirements might be. But um, we do have a technology to fit many different application sizes. Okay, great. Yeah, I'd say, and to, I think I, I mentioned earlier, um, we have a metal technology that's great for stuff like less than the size of an inch, um, up to our largest uh, print volume is about 20, 20 and a half inches by 15 and a half by 15 and a half. And many of our customers um, are able to, if they don't even have a printer that's that size, able to take their designs and think about how can I print this in multiple parts to, to make the most of the print volume that I do have. That, that's an excellent point, Melissa. One of the things that we, we have been doing recently for a couple different customers is some very large, um, very large prints that may not even fit in a single build volume, but we've been implementing, you know, lap joints or dovetails. And we did a really cool aircraft seat for a company a few months back. And, you know, obviously a full size seat, um, most printers couldn't accommodate that, but through, you know, clever splitting of parts and using uh, the right adhesives and, and compounds, we were able to get a really excellent looking uh, full size aircraft seat uh, built for them. Great, thank you, Andrew and Melissa. And, and this is kind of like a follow-up to that question. And I think you addressed some of this in your presentation, but if you wanna just revisit, um, what is the stress that these tools can handle and what type of materials are used for printing? So I'll, I'll start, uh, I'll let you go. Uh, I'll comment more on some of the new materials, Melissa. Um, so the, the first forming block that, um, Mike showed that little black forming hydroforming tool that was actually used in a hydroform process. So that was standing uh, 2,500 PSI. Now that customer had already tried 3D printing. They had tried with traditional FFF technologies. Um, they were using things like PETG, ABS, even doing it completely solid infill, um, and they just were not holding up. So we went over to the Mark Forge technology. We use their onyx material, which is a mix of uh, nylon with chopped carbon fiber. Um, but we also use the continuous technology to run continuous fibers throughout the entire part to give it a really good strength. And um, they were they were blown away that a 3D printed part, they've done over, I think, three or 400 stamps on this uh, forming block. And it's it looks pretty much like like it just came off the printer. So, um, yeah. Excellent, thanks, Andrew. Um, so we had a question that, that came in from a registrant. What is the cost per hour of operation for 3D printing? Yeah, I can take this one too. So a lot goes into figuring out what the cost per hour is, and there's a lot of variables that you can look at. So um, you can look at what is the, you know, what is the geometry of the part that I'm printing? Um, a lot of the times for 3D printed parts, you may or may not have like a fully dense parts. You might be using an infill pattern uh, as opposed to where you're traditionally just machining away material from something that's fully dense. Um, you also have to think about what kind of materials are you using? Are you using a continuous? So for us, like continuous carbon fiber is gonna be more expensive than using the continuous fiberglass. Um, or if I'm just doing a, a prototype mock-up, I might use the PLA material because it's low cost. Um, and then once I feel confident about my prototype, then maybe I'll manufacture that part and that the onyx material with the continuous carbon fiber. So I would say the answer is it's very um, geometry dependent, application dependent. Um, if I'd say get on a call with Sarah Tech and talk through your example of what, what you're trying to do, um, and they can help you find the best technology. Another comment on, on the cost, right? It's not always easy to compare apples to apples, but when you're talking about a traditional method like CNC machining versus 3D printing, you have a lot of other hidden costs there too, like you have machine setup time, you have a uh, programmer that has to program that machine and they usually you know, cost a lot of money to, to have a good programmer. But with 3D printing and especially with the Mark Forge solution, it's very user friendly, so you don't need an expert to set this thing up. And once the machine is running, it is completely automated. You, you set that thing up, 
it, you walk away and really um, you're you're not spending a ton of money or labor. So you got to factor all of that into the cost. So while it's it's hard to give an exact comparison, you know, if you look at it on the whole, you'll see that 3D printing has a lot of benefits, including cost savings there. Good point. Good point, Andrew. Um, folks, I know we're running a little long, but we we do have some questions. So if, if you guys want to stay on and, and answer these questions, I'm, I'm up for it. Okay, thanks. Um, another question is, I think, about um, certification and audits. Have these tools gone through any uh, prime, meaning Boeing, Lockheed, et cetera, those type of company, uh, audit process, and what was the result? Um, and maybe that's, maybe that's, uh, I don't know if that's goes to Brian and Mike in terms of their, their applications, but I can answer too. So if you, if you guys have an answer, I can let you go. You first. can speak, speak to our, our situation. Mike, you want to jump on that one? Well, yeah. So, so for our specific situation, because we're using it for tooling, doesn't require any special certification. Yeah, um, and I would say uh, my I, in in my role, I work with a lot of our government prime customers. Um, so, government direct and um, a lot of our def prime defense contractors who are all utilizing our equipment for um, tooling and fixture needs themselves, whether that's touching an aircraft directly or touching uh, a product or subsystem of it. So um, the, the parts are sometimes go through post-process inspection for those manufacturers. Um, but in, in many cases, yeah, we've had, we've had customers and subs for those primes also using tooling and fixturing that have been approved and reviewed by the OEMs. Great, thank you. Um, and I have uh, some additional question regarding primes as well. I, I think this goes back to the laser inspection that you were talking about in, in your slide, Melissa. Um, where do the laser equipment and inspection variables come in when the primes provides model for specific materials? Um, and then there's kind of like a, a follow-up to that. Is there any specification for environment variables? Um, I, may, I might need you to repeat the question, make sure I got okay. it. Yeah, so it's, it's um, he's asking, where do the laser equipment inspection vari variables come in when the prime provides models and they want specific materials. And um, so I, maybe so I'll, I'll try to answer the question, but I might not have it right. Um, so the laser micrometer that's built into the X7 is verifying dimensions, like dimensional accuracy of the part, and can also verify that if you told the printer to lay down fiber, that the fiber was indeed laid down where you expected it to be. Um, so it's really around dimensional and um, like pathing of the of the part itself. Um, in terms of making sure that the laser micrometer is accurate, we ha do have a test bed that you utilize with the X7 to um, basically acts as kind of like your calibration uh, for it while you know, before you put down the test bed um, that has a certification around it. And then you're able to utilize that to help calibrate it against your setup in particular. All right. And, uh but Melissa, part of that, that uh, having a digital Ford subscription, uh, I, I believe, entitles you to yearly calibrations with that uh, reference bed. Right. Excellent. I think you answered the, the, the question. Um, with that, I think that's all the questions that we have for today. Again, thank you, everyone, uh, for being part of our webinar today. Thank you to the panelists and, um, you know, the, the Mike and Brian from, from S. S F C. <laughs> I keep calling you guys S C F for some reason. And then uh, Melissa from Mark Forge, and thank you, Andrew, for being on here. Again, so if you guys have any 
a specific question, feel free to contact us, give us a call or shoot us an email. We'd be more than happy to, to have a, a private conversation with you about your specific situation and how we can help you implement 3D printing technology. Thank you everyone and have a great rest of your day. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.